Good evening and welcome to UP News. I'm your host, Wade Norris. Tonight we're interviewing Bill Menezes from Colorado Media Matters, uh, a watchdog group that makes sure that media is fair and accurate in its depiction between a conservative and progressive or liberal slants or viewpoints in news and news and reporting. Bill, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Good Thanks, Wade. Well, uh, I know what Colorado Media Matters stands for, but what, what does Colorado Media Matters do um, in this market and then the overall Media Matters organization? Well, we're actually the first state-based organization created by the national group Media Matters for America, which was formed about three years ago to monitor national media of all types, news media, talk radio, newspapers, um, to identify through fact-based research uh, conservative misinformation. That's uh, a report or a story or a commentary that's not credible or accurate and because of that promotes a conservative point of view. Now, last year we launched Colorado Media Matters to do the same thing focused primarily or purely on Colorado media. So we monitor the major city newspapers here, the broadcast network affiliates and uh, talk radio in the major markets to identify and then use fact-based research to substantiate that they're providing material to their listeners and their readers that contains factual inaccuracies or uh, distorted facts that promote conservative points of view. Okay. Uh, where it, why isn't there some type of government regulation of uh, non-factual or, or uh, slanted news? Well, regulation of the media in this country has always been something Americans have been very much against in those terms. Um, the constitutional guarantees of free speech really uh, allow us a lot of leeway in the media about how we report or comment on things. Um, the government does regulate things such as media ownership, how the public airwaves are used, and extreme forms of uh, commentary such as uh, obscenity, for example. Or hate speech. It, hate speech, exactly. Well, and even then, most of that is, is allowed unless it's done in a way uh, such as to incite a riot, for example. Um, but the government, in terms of media content, other than things like uh, obscenity, is pretty hands-off. And that's the way most Americans have wanted it for the last 200 years. Well, speaking of uh, if it's based on a free market decision-making by the, the audience, um, with the Don Imus issue, which I know was talked quite a, a lot about, his... Uh, yeah, um, insensitive remarks towards the Rutgers female uh, basketball team. Uh, that's where the market itself took a cultural stand and said, we're not going to sponsor this person's ads, or we're not going to work uh, to support this person anymore on the radio. Uh, does that type of thing, should that be enough of a check and balance, or is there so many uh, conservative viewpoints that it really it's really hard to distinguish where free market decisions by the public and where corporate uh, placement of, of conservative talkers. I mean, should, that's the argument I've heard on certain shows, that the free market should dictate who's on the air and, and who's paid for and stuff like that. What do you say to that? Well, that, that extremely complicated issue, as you know, because it gets into another piece, a number of pieces of the puzzle that aren't necessarily related directly to each other. The Imus case is a good example in that um, he had been saying similar things to the remarks that got him fired for years and years, and nothing really happened. I think he was uh, forced to apologize once or twice, but then went back to his same behavior. Mm -hmm. And the reason nothing ever happened to him is because, or, or a big reason was, because nobody ever really tried to hold him accountable or used the types of tools that we have now to do so. Um, Media Matters for America actually is the organization that broke the news that he had said this on the air. Granted, his listeners heard it, but the broader public, which might have an interest in how public airwaves are used, would have had no idea had it not been for an organization like Media Matters that actually archived the material and then could disseminate it through the internet, which is something, of course, that wouldn't have been possible, say, even 10 years ago. And we, we talked about that on the, on the radio show. Would the Makaka moment that un, uh, or dismantled uh, George Allen's 
bid for the Senate of, Senate seat of Virginia as a uh, incumbent and possibly a presidential contender would that have happened five years ago and, and we determined that not likely because it would have been a, a page 18 newspaper you know paragraph maybe but it wouldn't have been repeated over and over on YouTube and different blogging sites I, I, I agree and while that type of information dissemination through the internet is a tool that kind of helps the effect snowball the the fundamental reason that that actually happened both in the case of Senator Allen and the case of Imus was because it raised awareness among people about the types of things that were being said not only were people made aware of the extremely offensive nature of the thing he had said about the Rutgers women's basketball team but also of his history of making these types of remarks some of them pretty vile uh, both uh, ethnic slurs religious slurs racial slurs you name it and so by raising that awareness that created a backlash not only among general members of the public mm -hmm. but also among members of the workforce at NBC which is uh, the company that uh, broadcasts his show on television through a simulcast with MSNBC mm -hmm. um, there was a backlash among the journalism hierarchy there um, that put pressure on its management uh, in addition to the pressure that was being brought to bear by advertisers who also were being made aware of this you know grassroots discontent with this type of speech and so it all coalesced to result in his firing and uh, uh, his eventual firing from CBS network which originated this broadcast so um, I, I think that that type of awareness raising is something that's relatively new and hopefully we'll see more of it and it's good to hear because what started with one person's comment, now uh, leaders in the African American community are, are uh, I was listening to Jesse Jackson on his show this past weekend, and he was saying that on the cover of Ebony and Jet, they're actually taking to task the rap artists and what they're saying. Because one of the arguments I just made, he says, well, singers and, and entertainers say these same kind of statements all the time, but you don't attack them. Right. But now, you know, uh, Sharpton and Jackson said, "Yeah, we should attack them." So, it's actually turned. Uh, it's actually turned a quarter and is making a difference in all type of uh, types of speech people use in everyday entertainment. Now, now, Media Matters of, of America broke the IMA story. Are there some stories here in Colorado that you guys have have broke uh, that are? pertinent to our listening audience? Well, well, there are, and, and some of them are ongoing now, the most recent being uh, some uh, extremely offensive remarks that uh, KOA Denver host uh, goes by the name of Gunny Bob Newman, mm -hmm. Bob, right. Newman, Bob Newman, um, who on May 8th said that he wanted a law passed where all Muslim immigrants in this country, including naturalized citizens, should be made to wear GPS brake bracelets to track their movements as if they were criminals, um, should have their homes and their community centers and their mosques bugged, and uh, that there should be a moratorium on Muslim immigration into the United States. Now, that basically sounds like his opinion, but essentially he's using the public airwaves to call for the persecution of a group of people on the basis of their religion. That's something that the people in this country long ago have decided was totally unacceptable. So uh, a parallel would be to say we, we can't, we have to put ankle bracelets on the Irish and well, no more Irish can come to the States the like, the, like, the like, the like they said a hundred years ago. Well, a historical perspective unfortunately is when the Germans in the 1930s said if you're Jewish you have to wear a yellow star on your clothing. Right, right. And, so it's very uh, similar. So it's, it's very similar, a, mm -hmm. a pretty chilling thing for a modern day radio personality to say regardless of what his opinion is. And our belief is that with the right to use those public airwaves and the right of free speech go certain responsibilities for responsible discourse. That doesn't mean you can't have a strong opinion or even a heated discussion about an opinion, but it means we believe you should stick to facts instead of using falsehoods to support your opinion. Um, you shouldn't use ethnic or racial slurs. And you shouldn't uh, advance your opinion by using the types of discourse that Newman used, uh, which is basically to strip constitutional rights from a group of Americans, um, purely on the basis of their religion.